the greatest and awesomest month of the year in which we celebrate the most badass action hero the world has ever known, Reb Brown. And I thought I'd kick things off with a bang this year by reviewing Reb's newest movie, Night Claws. That's right, I said newest movie, 2012! I couldn't even believe it! When I heard Reb Brown was coming back for a new movie, I was like... <laughs> I am so fucking jacked to see this movie, I can't wait! This right here, Reb Brown vs. Sasquatch. Hell, that's what they should have just called this movie. This Bigfoot is so fucking hosed, by the way. The man took out werewolves for crying out loud. His sister was a werewolf and he shot her in the chest with a fucking shotgun. <laughs> and we have wasted way too much time already, so Reb Brown vs. Sasquatch, baby, let's do this! Oh man, this is gonna be so awesome! It's gonna be fucking badass! This is gonna be... It, it's gonna be the beginning to every single slasher movie ever made. Did you hear that? Hear what? That... that animal. There's, There's something, something out, out there, there Donnie. Donnie. Maybe, come on, it, it's nothing. It, it's probably, probably just, just like a, a wolf, wolf or, or a bear, bear or something. Or something. Well. Oh come on, this was hack screenwriting in the 50s! The only thing that would surprise anyone with a setup like this is if they got naked, had sex without interruption, and just went home. Thanksgiving. I know you heard that. I know you did. Yeah, I did. Then go out there and check things out, or we're not finishing anything. Go check it out? The fuck you think he is? The Beastmaster? The fuck's he gonna do to a bear? Here's a smarter idea. Why don't you drive a mile down the road, pull over, and fuck there? This is so cliche. I thought at first there's no way they're actually opening a horror movie in 2012 like this. I don't know, I just thought the director has to be doing something clever, like having the actual characters of the movie watching a cheesy horror movie and this is the scene in it and then laughing at how predictable it is. I mean, what is so wrong? Why do they do that? You know what's sad? Even doing that is cliche. You can never have sex. <laughs> Okay, okay, Jesus. Wait, here comes another. Here, here. Oh, yes! Predictable. I knew he was gonna bite it. She held on so hard that Donnie's feet ripped off before she let go. She's got a grip like a superhero. She must have hands like Truckosaurus. Thanksgiving. Oh, oh no. You bought your monster costume from a spirit Halloween store. That's like a half step up from the squishy sound from the ring. Okay, you know what? Fuck it, this doesn't matter. Now that that's out of the way, we can get to Red Brown kicking his hairy ass. This is gonna be so great. Frank Stallone? Well, this could be a good sign. You know, Red Brown teams with Rambo's brother. Wow, look at this footprint. It's fucking perfect. It's got like 90 degree angles. Does Bigfoot wear three inch platform shoes? Okay, so it's the next morning and the cops are scooping up what's left of the dead bodies. It's a mess, too, because Bigfoot does not fuck around. Talk about losing your head over a girl. Yeah! Rep Brown here plays the small-town sheriff, Joe. And I bet he's like a hardcore walking death wish cop who doesn't play by the rules. Sorry, I haven't had my coffee yet. What's going on? Or not. So what the hell happened here, Roberta? Well, good morning to you, too, Joe. <laughs> I'm sorry, you're right. Good morning, Roberta. It is a lovely day this morning, isn't it? Say, oh, um, I don't suppose you could tell me anything about those two horribly eviscerated corpses we're standing ten yards from. You know, whenever it's convenient. Williams! Come over here! Yeah, check it out. There's a GIF file on the car here. What the hell could have done that? I don't know. The coroner said it must have been some kind of animal. No! So what? You think we got some kind of serial killer wacko on our hands? Let the coroner report tell us. But in the meantime, we should shut down the parks and the campgrounds uh, just to be safe. He wants to shut down the parks? Hmm, huh, it sounds kind of familiar. Larry, we have to close the beaches. Okay, if I were a cheesy, completely uninspired knockoff of a 70s monster movie, what would I do next? Hmm. 
I got it. I'd have a greedy, corrupt mayor who won't let him close down the parks because it'll cost the town valuable tourism revenue. It's real bad timing for something like this to happen in our town. It's summertime, Joe. Bam! God, I'm good! It's summertime, Joe. Amity is a summer town. We need summer dollars. We have the pumpkin festival coming up and other things, and the last thing we need is this kind of publicity. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm sure the pumpkin festival just brings in millions. The town economy would collapse without all those pumpkin tourists. We normally get over 100,000 visitors to this township during the festival share. We rely on that income. The township needs it to survive. Look, we depend on the summer people here for our very lives. You are not going and to have a summer unless you deal with this problem. Why would people be afraid of going to a pumpkin festival in the middle of town when the animal attacks are obviously taking place in the woods? But you could possibly avoid a disaster for us by keeping it quiet and getting it solved as quickly as possible. We can't! The press! And please, try to keep the press out of this. You yell shark. We've got a panic on our hands on the 4th of July. I don't know what this guy's problem is. You've got a Sasquatch, man. Mayor Clinton from Pumpkinhead 2 would have been printing t-shirts already. Well, let me put it this way. The abominable snowman, Bigfoot, that stuff is big business. The way I see it, this thing could put us on the map. I've got a bunch of body parts down in the morgue that used to be two teenagers. Tragedy, ain't it? Thank you, Sheriff. And good day to you. You too. Asshole. I heard that, Curtis. I'm literally seven feet away from you! Anyway, Sheriff Joe puts out a call for anthropology experts, and it just so happens there's one nearby who is also an expert on Sasquatches. Well, her and her intern guy. I'm pretty sure he's stoned right now. But this will be the first time we get to be there just after it happened. Cool. This is gonna be huge for us, Thomas. Cool. Good, you drive. I gotta change clothes. Cool. Yeah. Anyway, she's basically Richard Dreyfus from Jaws, but with boobs. And somehow less sex appeal. I'm Professor Sarah Evans from the National Museum of Anthropology. And how in the world did you get wind of this so fast? We have our ways, Sheriff. You have ways? No, the KGB has ways. Unless the National Museum of Anthropology maintains an elaborate Sasquatch spy network and an elite rapid response anthropologist strike team. And where the hell's Frank Stallone? What are you going to do when you find out that uh, a person did it? What person? Wolverine? So no man could have done this. Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no chance. No chance. What about an animal, Doc? What else is there? Robots? Sasquatch. Ooh, Sasquatch. What? <laughs> Sasquatch, Yeti, Abominable Snowman, Bigfoot, whatever you want to call it, that's what did this. That's not real. Yeah, let's put that on the coroner's report. Cause of death, abominable snowman. You mean we have a ten-foot-tall killer Bigfoot on the loose out there? Mm -hmm. Oh, great. Just great. The movie's B-plot involves a group of hikers on some kind of three-day survivalist tour with minimal supplies. I don't even know if they give these characters names, although why bother? They might as well just be holding up a 30-foot banner that reads Meat Train. Well, hey, the body count's gotta come from somewhere, right? And Frank Stallone's not in that group, either! Where's Frank Stallone?! One of the only memorable members of this group is this jerk-ass guy whose only character trait is that he just gets up in your grill, like, immediately. He gets in this dude's personal space within about 90 seconds of meeting him. What the hell do you two think you're doing? The first rule of survival is to count on others in your party, not to kill each other. Really? That's the first rule, don't kill each other? Yeah, makes sense. What's the second rule, don't eat your own fingers? Yeah, and then there's this lady. Suck it up, both of you. Shake hands, and let's get this show on the road. Jesus Christ, this lady. Even for a movie about a killer yeti, her acting sucks. She's so stiff and weird, it's like she's in sixth grade trying to do a presentation on the Spanish-American War and trying the whole time not to look at her note cards because she spent all night trying to memorize it. Just look at her. Her asshole's clenched so tight it could bend steel. Pretty much, yes. As you know, we're going out into the wild for a period of three days. Free screenwriting tip. No member of the human race ever begins a sentence with, as you know. If they already know it, why are you telling them what they already know? The first thing a person needs to do when they find themselves in a survival type of situation is to get their bearings. Hey, wait, I thought the first thing was not to kill each other. Are you just making these rules up? Meanwhile, Sheriff Joe and the good doctor are looking for leads on Bigfoot. 
Yeah, their investigation consists of walking around town and asking random people if they know anything about Bigfoot. Did I hear you mention Bigfoot? Hey, if you're gonna do it, might as well do it by the book. This case is as good as solved. Where might I find someone named Cooter? He's that goofy-looking dude at the end of the bar. You know, I gotta say, I really don't have that much confidence in this supposed expert Sasquatch hunter. When plan A for finding Bigfoot is talking to a sweaty, hairy man named Cooter, who smells like weak old anchovies. I got me a bunch of photographs that nobody's ever seen before. Okay, when the greasy town drunk asks if you want to see his photographs ain't nobody ever seen before, you say no! He got my dog, though. <clears throat> I think he ate him, too, because I ain't never seen poor old Cooter again since that day. Your dog's name was Cooter? Well, what else would it be? Could we maybe, like, see flashbacks of the monster, like in Boggy Creek? This is a mythical creature we're talking about here. Show us what happened. Don't tell. First thing he wanted to do is he wanted to have sex with me. No, oh, no, no flashbacks. I take it back. I don't think that's very funny. <laughs> You're damn right it ain't funny. That hurt like hell. No, I don't want to see this guy anymore. Bring back the clenched jaw, no talent bone sack lady. <laughs> oh, great day for night shot, guys. Where the fuck are they camping? It looks like they're in Mordor. Because somehow their campfire is blue and emits no light whatsoever. We're going to set up snares for game. What kind of game? Rabbit, chipmunk, squirrel. I don't think I can eat any of those. Get hungry enough, you'll eat them. Ah, oh, this woman couldn't act wet in a thunderstorm. <laughs> oh, thank God. I was fucking terrified she was going to be the survivor chick using her skills to battle back against the Sasquatch. Oh, that's a relief. Hey, hang on. Why does this dickhead here have a gun? And why would he bring a fucking machete? <laughs> oh, Bigfoot's on a roll. He's working on a kill streak bonus here. <laughs> Bigfoot, man, he will straight up bite your fucking face off. Come on! Don't shoot us, me! <sighs> oh, man! Guys, this is getting embarrassing. Bigfoot should play middle linebacker. You know, I hear the Ravens need a new guy. The guy and his wife somehow manage to survive the night, but instead the next morning get captured by a group of grizzled Bigfoot hunters, who even four professional redneck Sasquatch hunters are strangely kill-crazy and psychopathic. Let me shoot him, boss. Shut up, number two. But you promised I got to shoot somebody. Shut up! Oh, we never get to do anything I want to do. They tie the couple to a tree to act as Bigfoot bait, and their badass leader just kind of wanders off for <laughs> no reason. You see that creature kill it. What about them? Fuck them. Leaving this inbred titan of intellect behind to guard him, and he immediately falls for the most transparent seduction ploy imaginable. As if that wasn't stupid enough, he basically gift wraps the entire escape for the other guy by propping his shotgun against the tree he's tied to. <laughs> Even so, these guys are still one rung higher on the evolutionary ladder than those fucking dorks on Finding Bigfoot, and the Bigfoot Hunter, and Sasquatch Legend Meets Science, and Monster- How many fucking Bigfoot shows are there? Animal Planet can kiss my ass! Anyway, Bigfoot kills this guy, and nothing of value was lost. One phone call, and I could have the military rolling in here in a matter of hours, and this entire investigation would be out of your hands. A college professor? with a panic button to bring in the military because of Bigfoot. It's okay. Okay. You can come along, but don't get in the way. Dude, she is so bluffing. And even if she's not, I gotta see her call in the Marines to hunt down fucking Bigfoot. Now that's what I'm talking about. Oh, come on. This town must be second on the list of most slasher movie victims per capita in the U.S., just under Crystal Lake. Number two, you can never drink or do drugs. <laughs> Sheriff Joe's assembled a posse to go, I don't know, wander around the woods just hoping they run into Bigfoot, mainly to get systematically picked off. So he sets up a roadblock to keep Numbnut A and Numbnut B from certain easily foreseeable death. But both of you better promise to me that you're going to town tonight and you're going to stay there and don't BS me. We'll do what you say, Sheriff. We'll do what you say. We promise. Okay, then. Why don't you just tell them there's a man-eating bear running around the woods that's already killed at least two people? You can't! The press! And where in the hell is Frank Stallone? I'm about to take her out in the woods and lay some pipe. Oh! Hey, that pipe, baby. Yeah. You the man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you giving me the silent treatment all of a sudden? 
<laughs> okay, so wait. Bigfoot ripped her head off and then put it back on her neck stump just to fuck with him? Or was he carrying a katana? <laughs> What is it, Jimmy? Did you hear that? Did you hear it? He's like 30 feet away and going, ah! 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 Probably Bobby finally getting him some. Oh, is that what sex with Bobby sounds like? Ah! Ah! God damn, Bigfoot's fucking ninja, dude. How many people has he just obliterated from behind? Fucking Solid Snake couldn't get up behind you that fast. Jack Link's Beef Jerky presents Messing with Sasquatch. Oh, oh, you one sick motherfucker, man. Oh! Anyway, while all this is going on, Sheriff Joe leads the posse in a search pattern through the woods because somehow they didn't hear six people being torn apart within 30 seconds running distance of them. I want you to separate by 20 feet from one another. Rest ball in behind me! Move out! I think he said to move up. Guys, that is so not 20 feet apart. And for the love of Christ, where the fu- Is Frank Stallone in the Bigfoot suit? So then, this girl, the only survivor from the camp, runs into Joe's group and she points them in Bigfoot's direction. But she's in a complete panic, so Joe sends her back to the car, accompanied by a single deputy. Take her and get her out of here. I'm sure. Uh, positive. Yeah, let's split up, guys. Good plan. You might as well just have these two ladies running around the forest nude with a lit road flare in one hand and an air horn in the other. Hey, be careful out there, okay? And, and try not to menstruate. I think they can smell blood. Have none of these people ever seen a horror movie in their lives? You don't split up. It's the kiss of death. These people could not get any dumber. We should split up. We could cover more ground. Oh, my God. The Scooby-Doo gang would pity these fools. Cover more ground? Yeah, okay, Professor. Hey, when you find Bigfoot, be sure to scream real loud when he beats you to death with your own lungs, so we know where to come running. God, is it just me, or is it getting brighter out here tonight? Good thinking bringing your sunglasses, Rico. Well, thanks to them covering more ground, Joe finds the ruins of the destroyed camp and all the dead bodies. Damn it! Whoever did this may still be out here. Oh, you think? Pay attention! That thing out there, it killed Thomas. Yeah, wow, I'm shocked. But hey, just think of how much extra ground we covered. Relax. Everything's fine now. Everything is okay, all right? Everything is not okay! Eleven people are dead! And Frank Stallone's gone missing! I want you to get him to the hospital and take her with you. Oh, you gotta be fucking... Are you out of your mind splitting up again? For the third time in the movie? I never even heard of something like that. This is like sitting on top of a tree in a thunderstorm, holding a metal ladder over your head, screaming at the sky, Come on, God! Do it! I dare you, you fucking pussy! So I just got some great news today, Steve. My wife and I are gonna have a kid! We've been trying forever. Well, congratulations, man. Hey, you're gonna come to my retirement party tomorrow, right? Hey, they'll be here soon. Let's go get that wounded guy. No, you stay here and watch for the chopper. I'll get him. Just... again! Four times! You're splitting up four times in one movie! This is unbelievable. This has to be like a world record. This is like hitting on 18 in Blackjack four times! You know what? I hope they live. I hope they all live. I hope they find Bigfoot, they circle around him and catch him in this deadly crossfire and just kill the fucker and go back to town and have Denny's afterwards. It'd be revolutionary. Ah, there you are, Mr. Darwin. What took you so long? There is no monster. The only thing slowing Bigfoot down is he's got too many victims to choose from, all wandering in separate directions. So by this point, the only people left are Joe and the professor here. They see a hunter's cabin in the woods and figure, well, this is obviously where a killer bear would hide. But nope, it's the psycho Bigfoot hunter guy from before, and finally Reb gets his epic fight scene. Sir, get the gun. Let him go. Not a chance, bitch! Yes, thank you, finally! This is what it's all been leading up to, folks. It's 
what we've all been waiting for, so I hope you have prepared yourselves for the most epic monster battle in the history of cinema. Because Reb's just taken out the hunter, he's got access to the dude's entire arsenal of weaponry, pistols, rifles, booby traps, he's fully loaded, and it is on. It's Reb Brown versus Sasquatch, mono a Bigfoot, and it's about fucking time too, because this movie has been about 70 minutes of the most boring, predictable shit I've ever...